Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our talk by Dr. Delissa Edinburgh. I am Rupika Rizam. I am the Executive uh, Director of the Digital Ethnic Futures Consortium, and uh, I run that along with my colleagues, Keja Valens at Salem State University, yeah, uh, Carol, uh, Caroline Wilkinson and Jennifer Musial at New Jersey City University, Tanisha Taylor at Southern University, and Jamila Moore Pugh at Cal State Fullerton. Uh, we're happy to welcome you to our DEF CON speaker series. Uh, and I will go ahead and introduce our guest for today and then turn it over uh, to her. So Dr. Delissa Edinburgh is Assistant Professor and Chair of the Cultural and Ethnic Studies Department at Bellevue College. She is also the Culturally Responsive Practices Lead for Bellevue College's Faculty Commons. At the University of Iowa, she earned her master's and doctorate degrees in educational policy and leader leadership studies, school, culture, and society, and graduate certificates in public digital humanities and gender, women's, and sexuality studies. Um, Dr. Edinburgh has been a DEF CON teaching fellow, a DEF CON capacity building fellow, and we're absolutely delighted to have her here uh, to talk about some of her work. So thank you so much and welcome, Dr. Edinburgh. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Let me go ahead and get my screen shared and also get the slideshow up and make the adjustments. All right, so thank you everyone for being here um, at this presentation where I will be talking about faculty workshops and data visualization in the classroom. And more specifically, my development of a faculty workshop focused on data visualization at Bellevue College in Washington State. As mentioned before, my name is Delisa Edinborough. I am at Bellevue College, um, where I'm the assistant professor and chair in the cultural and ethnic studies department here. So before getting started um, about the workshop and what it entailed, um, I think it's important to talk about what led me to the space um, of developing this workshop. So my interest in digital humanities started at the University of Iowa, where I completed my PhD, as mentioned, um, in Schools, Culture, and Society, which is an interdisciplinary program um, that looks at educational issues. And one of my graduate certificates was in public digital humanities. My exposure to digital humanities at UI resulted in me being a part of the Colored Convention Project, um, the Iowa Satellite, which included scholars, librarians, graduate and undergraduate students, independent researchers, community activists, teachers, um, all invested in seeking out and digitizing historical documents related to conventions held by Black Iowans during the 19th century. My exposure to digital humanities at the University of Iowa, um, it also enriched my understanding of the scholarship, the methods, and the tools linked to digital humanities. And this offered me a new lens of understanding public engagement and digital historical scholarship. So when I accepted a position at Bellevue College in Washington State as an assistant professor, um, my interest in digital humanities continued and I found myself infusing data visualizations and digital historical projects and archives into my classes to support how students understood activism and systemic inequities and social issues. So I would use the color convention projects, I would use um, projects from uh, uh, the ACT UP Oral History Project, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee Digital Project, the University of Washington, Seattle Civil Rights and Labor History Project, they have a range of data visualizations too that I utilized in my classroom. And so these experiences in the classroom and at the University of Iowa, they led me to apply for the Digital Ethnic Studies Feature Consortium, uh, which I found by luck. Um, 
I applied for the fellowships over the last two years. The teaching fellowship, first of all, led me to make some changes to my recent US syllabus. And the capacity building fellowship led me to think about the development of faculty workshops at Bellevue College. And I will talk more about the development of such workshop here in this presentation. Now, with the DEF CON Capacity Fellowship, I had multiple ideas about how I wanted it to look. A lot of possibilities existed. Um, I was later able to narrow down the book that I wanted to shape the workshop on, and my focus on digital humanities, and more specifically, data visualization. However, I still had to think through how I wanted to inspire conversations about the book and how I wanted to strengthen faculty awareness and engagement with digital humanities and data visualization as well. I was able to narrow down the multiple possibilities that exist in part by relying on the people around me who were invested in this workshop. And this included my DEF CON capacity building fellowship mentor, Dr. Emily Edwards, who offered me a space to brainstorm my ideas and provided resources that helped me with the choices I made. At Bellevue College, we have a faculty commons, um, which is a great resource that supports faculty in planning professional development workshops. And so the then chair of the faculty commons, Tanya Estes, helped me to determine time schedules that worked for the workshop, advertise this offering to faculty and incentivize, very important, faculty participation in the workshop. So by consulting with these individuals and drawing from prior knowledge about teaching and digital humanities, I was able to move forward with a solid plan for the workshop that I liked. I was able to narrow down the multiple possibilities that came to mind in planning a workshop and have a more direct focus. Now I developed a workshop around W.E.B. Du Bois's Data Portraits, Visualizing Black America. It's a book that came out in 2018. Um, it's an edited volume by Whitney Baptiste Baptiste and Britt Russert that examines the colorful and pioneering data portraits that sociologist, writer, and activist W.E.B. Du Bois presented at the Paris World Fair exposition in the 1900. Now, I plan to have an examination of this book's historical and sociological arguments serve as a point of departure. Um, so the book would uh, introduce participants into um, digital humanities and data visualization. So describing what these two concepts were, explaining the impact as well as historical and contemporary foundation of data visualization. This book would provide a pathway for that as well. This book would also provide a pathway for individuals to examine digital humanities tools and projects involving data visualization. And it would also provide a point of departure for participants, one of the most important things from the workshop, to reflect on how data visualization can foster students' engagement and cultural awareness. Ultimately, I wanted to re-envision how traditional book discussion workshops looked by not just focusing on this pivotal text that brought together Du Bois's data portraits in a book format for the first time, um, but also making vital connections between this text and pedagogical practices, critical awareness of data visualization projects and tools, and the disciplinary focus of digital humanities. Some more details about the workshop. And so in the center, you have here um, a workshop poster that I created using Canva. Um, the workshop sessions were held virtually in summer 2023 and fall 2023. Um, I did not anticipate having the workshop two times, but because of the success uh, it had in summer, I went forward to doing it again in the fall as well. To complete the workshop and gain professional development hours and receive a stipend from the Bellevue College's Faculty Commons, participants had to attend three out of the four sessions and also complete a reflection essay. I'm going to talk more about this essay and some other learning activities embedded in the workshop in the next slide. 
In summer quarter, 15 participants, the maximum number of participants signed up for the workshop and we had 13 of those participants being active throughout the workshop. Um, it was held on Tuesdays from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Um, and in the fall quarter, six participants signed up for the workshop, five were active throughout the workshop, and it was held on Fridays from 9.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. Um, in both offerings, participants came from various divisions um, on Bellevue College's campus, whether social science, science and maths, arts and, arts and humanities, um, which meant that we had faculty who taught psychology, cultural and ethnic studies, English, maths, anthropology, political science. It was a very rich um, discussion space because of the background, the teaching backgrounds of the participants and faculty um, who committed their time and effort to this workshop. An important part of the workshop that I do want to spend some time on um, includes the working, the, the learning activities linked to the workshop. So as I mentioned before, what we was key... trying to see if you made it. Oh, as okay, I... then. All right. That's all I want to know. We have someone chatting as well. Um, okay, so as I mentioned before, what was key for me in this workshop was re-envisioning how traditional book discussions that focused on data visualization and digital humanities looked like. I wanted to have um, the data portraits book serve as a point of departure. Um, however, I wanted, and because of this, I wanted to build a range of learning activities around our discussion of this book. So it's a discussion of the book, but also it's touching on multiple other activities in order to better understand what the book was talking about and its, its look at data visualization in an, in an early period of time. So my efforts to re-envision how a traditional book discussion looked like um, was reflected in the learning activities embedded in the workshop Zoom sessions and online management system. Yes, this does look like a lot of learning activity, but keep in mind, we were meeting for an hour and a half for four sessions. And uh, we not only had the Zoom component, but also another component that was on Canvas as well. And so because of this, I was able to spread very carefully um, these learning activities in different spaces. So in addition to reading selected book chapters, Participants had to evaluate Du Bois and his team's data portraits and plates from the Paris World Fair Exposition in 1900. Discussion board assignments and Zoom meetings offered a space for the review of these portraits and plates. Um, the question used to analyze these portraits and plates asked participants to consider the narrative of the visualization. What was the motivation for them? What the designer hoped to communicate? What resources they felt would have been necessary for the creation of such plates or, or portraits? I hoped faculty would use such questions not only when examining the book's portraits and plates, but also when looking for visualizations for their course and when supporting students' evaluation of, um, of visualizations as well. So here is a snapshot of how that activity looked. Um, these were the instructions for it within the summer quarter, as I mentioned before. Um, by looking at the plates, I, I would hope that participants enriched how they evaluated, examined, and discussed the vibrant um, visualizations that existed in this period. The book had two parts, and each part had a broad selection of plates to select from. For part one, I would ask participants to select two plates or portraits that sparked their interest. I would ask them to do so for part two as well. And then, as I noted before, these are the questions that I, I offered participants to think about as they looked at the visualization. Um, I noted as well before that these questions, I not only wanted them to be applied to the data portraits from the 1900, but I hope that participants 
Also, as we moved on to other learning activities, use such questions to evaluate more present day data visualizations. And as they plan learning activities that you know, encourage students to also examine and evaluate and interrogate data visualizations as well. Another important part of the workshop um, we had in Zoom sessions, I shared mini lectures that talked about the history of data visualization, included short video resources about data visualizations, and shared supplemental reading materials and data visualization tools and examples for the classroom. It was important for me that I primarily started the workshop session with a basis for digital humanities and data visualization before getting into discussion about the book. And so the space of the mini lecture allowed for that. We're talking about digital humanities and data visualization. So what is it? I felt we needed to have a grounding on what this meant before getting into other learning activities and discussions and the book as well. Further, while I did not require that participants use data visualization tools to create visualizations, um, in the space of the mini lectures, I wanted them to know that if they chose to, there were accessible tools that could help them. So this was a part of the workshop as well, thinking about digital humanities and also thinking about uh, accessibility. Uh, thinking about accessible tools that would allow, if needed and if wanted, participants or their classes to create data visualizations as well. We also had um, a reflection essay that allowed participants the opportunity to think about how data visualization could enrich what their approach and practice um, was with teaching. I wanted this reflection to offer participants a space to research, evaluate, and process what it meant to select a data visualization that would benefit some aspect of their course. In breakout groups, participants had the chance to clarify and share aspects of their reflection with each other. And so this here is an example of how this activity looked like uh, from the summer workshop session. As I mentioned before, um, what was key for this course, what was key for this workshop was not just talking about Du Bois's data portraits, not just talking about um, data visualization and digital humanities, but also thinking about how the conversations and engagement within this workshop space can serve as a catalyst for faculty to rethink and re-envision their pedagogical approaches and practices within the classroom space. So I asked them to consider an assignment, lecture, or class activity that would uh, that they would like to include at least one data visualization, had a range of places to, to pick from. Um, then with this consideration, research potential, potential visualization that can be useful for their assignments. I provided um, spaces where they can find they, they could have searched for visualizations. Um, I also provided a space where they could meet with me if they wanted us to do the research uh, collectively to find such visualizations. Um, so they, they knew what lecture or class activity they were interested in added data visualization to, they researched it. An important part of this reflection essay was also processing what happened. And so at the end of it, I asked them, the participants to describe researching and evaluating visualization. How did this look like for you? Um, so not just doing, but taking a step back to think about the process. Um, what challenges or insights did they encounter when doing so? How do they envision what they're doing? Um, how do they envision its impact on students' engagement and skills? Um, and uh, also, considering how Du Bois's data portraits impacted how they approached including visualizations in their classroom. It was a very short reflection essay, but what was key for me was to set aside time in each workshop session where we could break it down, talk a bit more about it, talk about where to find data visualization examples, as well as share what participants came up with during the space um, of doing this reflection essay. At the end of the workshop, 
Um, I use Google Jamboard, which unfortunately is phasing out, um, to have participants share short comments about their engagement with the workshop central books. Um, there was also a short three-question true and false quiz to re-emphasize some key points about the text. Another part that we had within this workshop that was musical engagement. Um, so in the final minutes of the workshop, I played Ella Fitzgerald and Duke Ellington, It Don't Mean a Thing If It Ain't Got That Swing, which was referenced in the book to describe the need for visualizations to not only have relevant information, but also capture audiences' attention. This song stuck with me as I read the book and planned the workshop. And so I placed the spotlight on it at the end to remind participants of the need to balance informative with engagement, uh, engaging like Du Bois and his team did with the portraits and plates. Um, and to think about this as they're progressing with including data visualization within their classroom and selecting visualization for their courses as well. An important part of workshops are evaluations. And I got a lot of feedback about this workshop from various spaces. Uh, at the end of the workshop, participants were given a short Google survey um, and from me. So I created a Google survey to share with participants. It was very short, asking participants to consider what worked, what didn't. Bellevue College Faculty Commons provided a workshop evaluation, a more formal evaluation to the participants. Um, both evaluations mirrored each other in offering primarily positive comments about the book selections, um, structure of the meeting, learning activities, and engagement with colleagues. I did receive a suggestion for the workshop to be done in person um, rather than virtual. In emails and conversations, I had colleagues offer transparent um, comments about how the workshop impacted them and their classes, and more specifically, how the workshop led them to include Du Bois's uh, plates and portraits in their classes, um, to make changes in assignments, to add visualizations to their classroom. Uh, we were a campus, we were, I run into people, and so they were very open in sharing how the workshop impacted them. Um, they also sent emails to, I, I noted within the workshop that I, I, I saw this workshop as the beginning of our communication about data visualization in their classroom. So as, as they progressed with making changes to their classroom or changes to assignments, reach out and tell me how it how it went and, and faculty did, participants did. Um, so these direct and informal communications, what it did is that it reaffirmed to me the relevance of this workshop on campus. Um, it also, you know, helped me to get a, a temperature check. I, I did the workshop, but also these were the spaces through which I, I better understood the relevance, the impact, and, and just how faculty engaged with what we did in terms of learning activities within this space. So I'm at the point where I talk about some final thoughts and, and we open it up to questions or comments. But in doing this, this presentation, I realized I did have some, some final thoughts about planning a workshop surrounding data visualizations and digital humanities on campuses based on my experience. Um, and hopefully if, if others choose to progress with this path as well and continue to progress with this path, maybe they see some connections with this as well. So it is important um, to utilize the available internal and external resources to develop workshops. It is just not you. Um, so whether it is fellowship, whether it's collective, whether it's individuals, in my case, I am grateful that I had um, DEF CON, I had Bellevue College Faculty Commons. Um, they were, they saw an idea and a possibility that I had for the workshop and they invested their time and effort in helping me to successfully execute the workshop. Um, and this just speaks to the relevance and the importance of resources and, and seeking out a support group, seeking out individuals invested in your ideas to help you execute them. 
um, you need to like the workshop that you are doing because you will be balancing it with your life, work responsibilities, and other interests. Uh, when planning this workshop, I was on the tenure track, I was sharing, I was teaching classes, and dot, 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 insert, you know, a range of other things. However, I like this workshop. Um, I like planning it. I like engaging with people connected to it. I found value and a challenge in doing it. And so that made it feasible. It also made it worthwhile as well. Um, I realized also my final thought is that the workshop was a space for me to address some of my goals and visions about equitable teaching practices on campus. Um, by having a space where I could consistently center this book and data visualization, I was able to have a somewhat far reach um, and impact on a campus that positively received this workshop um, space as well. So this is the end of, of the presentation. Um, thank you just for, for spending some time here today, hearing me talk through about the development of this workshop. Um, I will pass it back to Rupika so we can open it up to uh, questions or comments. Thank you so much, Dr. Edinburgh, your fantastic presentation. Um, I'd like to invite anybody who'd like to ask a question to please either you can put your question in the chat, you can um, raise your hand using the reaction raise hand feature, um, you can unmute or uh, turn on your video to ask a question. Um, and while folks are um, Thinking about that, I'll ask one question that I think is something that a lot of our colleagues think about, which is that you are at a teaching institution. Um, I used to be at a teaching institution as well, and so there's a lot of there's a lot of teaching, there's a lot of service, and just love to hear you talk a little bit about how do you balance sort of trying to do this kind of work um, with your other responsibilities and your department chair with all your responsibilities. Yeah, no, it's it's a lot. Um, and uh, I think seeing where things connect um, helps. And so with this fellowship, it connected to what I envisioned myself being as an educator or some of the values that I have within the classroom or how I see digital humanities expanding the digital literacy skills that I hope to be in objectives within my classroom as well. Um, and I think that is the balance that happens, um, seeing how a lot of what I am doing, it might be located in different little boxes, but there, there's a lot of connections and there's a lot of parallels. So even being department chair and, you know, having a more strategic look at planning and, you know, communicating with individual that comes into play within the workshop space, within um, reaching out to individuals and having a support group on campus as well. So that's the balance. It doesn't make the work a lot easier, but seeing those connections does um, open a way for, for me to be a bit more adjusted um, in, in what I choose to do. Great. Thank you so much. We have a couple of questions coming in on the chat. The first is from Juwan Wu. Dr. Edinburgh, thank you for sharing your experience of the workshop. My question, what do you think motivated the faculty members to attend the workshop? I'm asking this as a person who has led many on-campus workshops, but has a hard time to attract attendees. And that was that was my initial concern. And so I was also expressing that um, when I got the, the fellowship with my mentor, um, how do you think people will come even before planning it? I had that thought. I think at Bellevue College, I feel that it was a space where we had a, a lot of participants um, invested in thinking about how to connect with students within the classroom. There's a lot of changes happening. Um, within the classroom. And I think the faculty here primarily were seeing this as something that benefited uh, their engagement with students, their uh, connection with some of the values and missions that they had within the classroom, and just who they saw themselves to be, their teacher teaching identity as well. And so they did a lot of the work in, in that area to, to bring themselves into the space. I think what's important as well with Bellevue College is that we do have that space of a faculty commons, um, which is a common grounds through which one can advertise and plan and incentivize faculty participations within workshops as well. 
Um, and so this was able, as I mentioned before, support is vital. This was able to to do a lot of the work that I felt in if I had to do that aspect of it without the faculty comments, it it would have looked um, differently, which is why I'm highly appreciative. So um, that space, I think that draw that was a, a drawing factor for faculty and the participants as well. Um, knowing that we do have this central hub, knowing that professional development hours were linked to the workshop, knowing that it was it it was incentivized because of the faculty comments. Um, and also just the culture of teaching at the college as well, the, the interest in expanding and thinking more about teaching practices, especially with um, the shifts that we see continuing to impact um, teaching across the country as well. Great. Thank you so much, man. I think that your experience yeah. is a lot like the ones that others who are part of the DEFCON community have had, which is that you're looking for ways to sort of see what actually matters to your colleagues, like understanding what motivates them and thinking about how you can connect to that and also looking at what's already happening on campus or what kind of infrastructures you already have on campus and how can you link into them, whether it's like teaching the, the faculty commons, teaching and learning center, um, or other existing uh, infrastructures um, mm -hmm. that people already know and trust uh, yes. that you can then use. Yeah. That's like a big, like the big DEF CON tr uh, tip <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we all like to share with each other. We have another question um, from uh, Sajana um, Sletin. I apologize if I pronounced your name wrong. Thank you for sharing your experiences and approaches. Do any of the participants' discoveries or ideas for pedagogical applications stand out to you? Yes. Um, and so I did have... Um, a participant from political science um, at Bellevue College who sent an email afterwards talking about some of the changes that he made to the assignment. So part of discussing the data portraits from Du Bois was also reminding us that we are in a period of time where we have so much technology that can make flashy uh, visualizations. Du Bois did it in a period of time when that wasn't present. So what does it mean to not just think about the technology and tools that are available, but to think about what it means for students to, to go back to that, 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 that space where Du Bois was, where that wasn't accessible. And so this, we, we looked at the Dear Data project, which my mentor, um, Dr. Emily Edwards suggested, which goes back to more hand-drawn visualizations. And so this faculty was able to use it in political science course, um, use a prompt as well as have students engage with hand-drawn data visualizations to help them to better meet some of the outcomes for the class and some of the outcomes from the, for a particular assignment within the class. And I think this stood out to me because it 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 connected one to the culture of data visualizations that existed with with Du Bois's work, and it also I think part of it as well is that we want students to embrace technology and tools with data visualization, but we also want to provide a space where they understand what it means for them to be able to create data visualizations using, you know, aspects and resources that do not rely on this as well. And so seeing that activity and hearing more about it um, was, was, was interesting to me, as well as how the faculty member executed it as well, and the impact that it had in the classroom. And so part of what the, the faculty member noted is that this was the positive, This she was impressed, <laughs> highly impressed by the, the level of interrogation of data related to their lives that students were then able to create a visualization from. And so that was a, a conversation that that, you know, the, the shifts in pedagogical practices and approach that, that stood out to me, as well as more inclusion of Du Bois in classes <laughs> um, and, and what these portraits and plates represented. So they spoke a lot to the economic, social, and political um, context of this period of time. And so the addition of this fits into a range of classes. And so hearing how um, English professors and history professors and, and other individuals and anthropology professors as well included it within their classroom, that was, you know, more Dubois sprinkled in, in new places. That's good. Wonderful, thank you. Um... Anna Ritia, did you have a, your hand up? 
Yes, thank you so much for such a lovely presentation. Um, and I'm so excited to hear that everything went well with the workshop. And I want to know, what are some ideas of, or recommendations that you have now after the workshop to sort of be able to sustain those relationships um, that were made during the workshop, um, as well as interest in data visualization projects as well? Yeah. Um... To sustain the interest, I think, I think providing within the workshop, I think what helped to sustain the interest in it and what helped with the feedback I received that showed a sustained interest in it was the fact that I I, I saw this, I emphasized within the workshop that this was a space where, where we're going to continue on. I might not be facilitating the workshop, but now you are planning assignments, now you are selecting visualizations, and I am a resource for you to, to reach out to on campus, to share your success, to share your challenges, to share how you want to readjust and, and change things as well. Well. And so for me, what helps with this workshop, as well as some of the other workshops that I do on campus, I, I see it as a foundational space. And I emphasize that we, we can build and we will continue to build on this space. And we are a campus where we know each other emails, we run into each other and during classes, like this is the space where we share and we let know what we're doing. I think Part of, of what it means to be an educator is to celebrate um, what we do. And I, I emphasize that I wanted to as well celebrate with faculty what they're doing, as well as still do what my mentor, as well as other individuals on my campus did for me, um, provide a space when things don't go right and you need to think it through. Um, so that is is what I will would link to sustain interest whenever doing workshops and campus seat as a, a foundational space that I know that within this space, we just continue to grow and to keep engaging and to keep asking. Um, I think community building and relationship building are key, especially when we want to insert or disrupt some of more traditional practices on campuses. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, do we have any other questions? No, and I'm just looking at the comments too. Thank you, Donna, <laughs> uh, about your comment. Much appreciated. Um, yeah, I, I, I think, and it, it goes back as well, um, just with the support. And I, I think this is part of DEF CON as well, that, that, this provided an avenue where I could have more of a relationship with, with colleagues on campus, with, with faculty on campus as well. And so just thinking about this workshop, just thinking about, you know, how do we have a space where individuals not only share, learn, you know, express challenges as well. This workshop was a medium through which I was able to do so. And so I'm very appreciative of the space that it offered. And so thinking about the workshop, not just as a space where people come and learn, but how it allows the, the college in many ways to, to have a space that checks off some other aspects like faculty wellness, faculty community building, um, innovation within pedagogical practices and approaches as well. It was accomplishing a lot within that space too. Thank you. Oh, we have another question. Melanie, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you so much. I really liked your handouts and the way that you kind of walked through the purpose of visualization. I felt like that would be something that would really invite, you know, students or maybe people who hadn't done as much uh, visualization into the conversation. Um, how did you find that the transition from talking about visualizations to making them went? Because I always feel like that's the hard part for me. Um, and that's kind of, I've done a few of these workshops, not nearly as much as you, but um, that's where I kind of lose people sometimes is in that transition from reading visualizations to actually um, producing them themselves. So how did that um, um, you know, follow-up process go as people were going deeper into actually using them in their courses or... Um, yeah. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great question. And I think, so with this workshop, participants had to find the visualization to include in the classroom. They did have the option if they wanted to, um, to meet with me, um, otherwise to create visualizations if they wanted to. 
No one did. Um, but so that option did exist. But it led me, you know, as I was talking about Tableau and some of these other accessible places where I, I noted that we can create data visualization, it led me to think that that would be a good follow up for the workshop. So within this space, I think part of how I am adjusted with this workshop space is maybe this would be a part one of data visualization and you know learning about accessible tools and having that sort of in introductory element and then a second one maybe back to back quarters would be okay now we we have that grounding now we're going to spend another four weeks using um this tool and talking more about how you can create data visualizations with it even as i you know did the the teaching fellowship and the capacity building fellowship here with devcon and we we went through different visualizations and we had a bit of a workshop with it 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 like i i am doing at the university of iowa that that is a space where you can you can go multiple directions. I think for me, what was helpful within the teaching fellowship as well as within, you know, what I did at UI was the fact that whatever tools individuals learn, it is grounded on something that they want to do within the classroom, a change that they want to do within the classroom. As I mentioned before, that liking factor <laughs> is very key. Um, liking the the changes or the visualization you're making, liking what you're doing, I think that pushes individuals through some of the challenges that they encounter. And it did as I I did my own visualization creations as well as this workshop space too. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you so much. Um. We have another question um, from Joanne. I would love to hear more about your plan as a leader, chair, and colleague at your institution. For example, if you considered creating an interdisciplinary program or course in collaboration with other faculty members, what might be short-term and long-term goals for you as a digital humanities practitioner and teacher? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a long-term vision um, uh, thing. And so some of my, let me look back at a question. Um, an interdisciplinary program, I think that would be great. I think part of, of what I'm thinking through is how I can re-envision. So we have a, a number of recent U.S. courses within the Cultural and Ethnic Studies Department, a number of sections offered. So how I can re-envision a specific section of that to have that digital ethnic studies component and have that be more structured within quarters as well. Um, and then also that aspect of collaboration exists as well. So we do have spaces where faculty can work together to create courses across different disciplines. Disciplines. Uh, I have not yet ventured into it, but I know the infrastructure does exist um, on campus. And then even within uh, cultural and ethnic studies, part of, of what I am thinking about, which coincided with me being involved in DEFCON, is, is digital practices, digital literacy, digital awareness, um, and just an understanding of digital humanities more broadly. And so that is embedded within my courses. As I mentioned before, data visualizations are very key to discussing courses in women's studies, in queer studies, in race in the U.S. I embed it as much as I can, and I emphasize to students as well, this is not just, this is a course where we read, but I also want to bring in what does it mean to find accessible and credible information on these topics um, in the form of data visualizations or in the form of digital historical archives as well. So that is something that I've embraced within the classroom. And with the workshop, I've tried to expand a bit more, but I can see how cultural and ethnic studies in itself at Bellevue College can be re-envisioned and reimagined in ways that are exciting um, to include a lot of what I discussed and I shared with faculty as well. Great. Yeah. Well, Dr. Edinburgh, thank you so much for your inspiring presentation and for sharing your insights in this absolutely fantastic Q&A. Um, we're so, uh, so excited uh, about what you've been doing and thank you so much. No, thank you for having me and everyone for being here. This was a this was a good space to just process what has been done very key and not only doing, but having a space where you can talk about it and have questions. I appreciate that.
Well, thank you all. Hope you'll see you next month. <laughs> Keep an eye out on your email. Take care.